Hello and welcome to the Let's Build on Cure video. If you're a frequent viewer of Play Stippling, you may be wondering who the heck is talking right now? And that answer is Stippling, me. I'm trying something different with this uh, building video demonstration and I'm gonna try to talk through it to make it less boring and tedious. If you viewed my last Let's Build video, it was kind of more um, brief and kind of took you through it without actually having any interaction with me. It almost was a stop motion of sorts. And I really, really, really liked that kind of style, but with something this big, I think it required something um, more personal and also something simpler because it would take forever to do a stop motion of this being built. And if I want to continue doing Let's Build videos, this was probably the only way I can do it. So let's start with the parts. I'm not going to go through all of these because that would take forever and I'm not going to be able to list out a list of the parts numbers for each part. But I think I've laid it out to you in a way that you can view it, um, view each part. And I've also laid it out in a way that you can go back and see it from multiple angles. So I'm going to show you multiple angles as I'm talking through this. Um, I will point out a few um, things that are important in this video, and I'm just gonna go through them now real quick. Uh, these. This is probably the hardest part to find. These were from the Chima line, and I believe the only one to, um, to offer this part was the... I'm gonna be botching this name. It was the Elephant. I have no idea what his name was. You can put in the comments what his name was. Chi something. And it only came with one of these because it was kind of sh demonstrating that it was freezing over over time. So you'd have to get that set four times or do what I did and go to Bricklink. Unfortunately, when I started this project, I had none of those. So I really had to just go in and buy all four. And I don't like to do that. I like to work with parts that are readily available for everyone, but I just couldn't get myself to use the flat silver color. So I got it and they look great and it works with the silver color but it just doesn't have that same wow factor that having the frozen hooves has. Um, let's look at some other parts. These I didn't have. I'm not sure where they originate. I did have to buy these as well but these are easily available um, in multiple locations including Bricklink. Um, if you want to waste all your parts uh, for the, these half-sized Technic uh, beams you're going to use them a lot in this. There's about eight, four of each color. And I used different colors just because that's all I had. Uh, let's see, what else? What else we got? Regular size rubber band. Um, I think this is regular size. It's the only one I've ever gotten. Um, but they work. Uh, I got this one from a Skull Scorpio. You can get them, I'm sure, from lots of places. These, two of these are studs, as you can see. Two studs. And two of these are, I'm blanking on the name, but they're the, those. I'll find the name, say it better next time. Okay, three, uh, four four length trans blue, three three length in white. For these fur pieces, you only really need three. The fourth is just kind of decorative and I'll show you, you'll see that. Uh, two of those. A lot of these parts come from the current generation of Bionicle, so I'm not going to go over those. Um, and one of this, these as well, I think it's Vorox armor in silver, which comes with I don't know if it comes with Mellum. I don't think it does, actually. No, it doesn't. Okay. But yeah, one of those. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start with the torso, and we're gonna work our way through this and see how long it takes. This is kind of a test, so if this is the kind of video you like and you like this format, let me know and I'll keep doing it this way. If you hate it and I'm boring you like crazy, tell me, and I can adjust the format. I can make it shorter, I can make it longer. My instinct is always to go short with everything. As you can see in the videos to date, they're very short. But, like I said before, there's just no good way of doing that short. Okay, so we're going to start with the core of the body. And we'll need one of these length 5 axles with stoppers. And we'll just get started here. So, and I may make mistakes along the way. This is my first time doing a Let's Build in this kind of format. So, if you see something completely off or different from the final product, and I don't catch it, let me know. And I'll try to fix it. So I, I really wanted to build this Ankir um, character right from the start. I didn't, I really liked the characters that had features that were relevant to real animals, like, um, I'm trying to think which ones. I did like the Phoenix. I, I just like it when you can clearly identify with what's being shown to you. And when you can't really tell, like Melum or Melum, however you pronounce it, it gets confusing. So this is part of the core of the body. 
Th and you'll see this construction throughout the official lines. It's just a little different. Most of them work with two gears, and I work with a third. So that third allows things to go in a similar direction versus the opposite. So we're gonna put that down for a second. We're gonna build another one of those. So we're building two, same exact construction. A lot of these 90 degree angle turns. And yeah, this was nothing that creative on my part. In fact, I've, you've already seen it in a different package. It was in my Raptor video, which is sad, but I don't remember what I named him. <laughs> I'll, it'll come to me. The names are always kind of a last minute thing. I go with uh, just calling them by what they look like for the most part. I'll call them Raptor or Bird or whatever it is in that case. There's another one there. Okay, so we have two of those, one for each side. I look very pale in this light. Okay, and then we're gonna start with some of the gearing. The unfortunate thing with the way this was built is a lot of the, it doesn't come together very well early on. Um, it really relies on deeper in the build for it to actually come together. So, I apologize. I, I, you know, I probably should just part the C's here. I'm sure that would have been one of the suggestions if I didn't do it sooner. There goes the rubber band. Got it. So we'll part these and we'll bring the focus on what I'm building now, so you can see. Okay, and then we need a, tech, a length three axle with another gear here. Put that right in the middle. And then we need a length, let's see what that is, five. And this will be where the back legs kick. Like I said, this is the same as the Raptor, I just presented it in a different package. And I also wanted to present it in a way that was all more cohesive together. So I didn't want it to just be the body and then a tacked on backpack. That's really what they do with Melum and um, and a lot of the other creatures. So I really didn't want to do that. So I tried to integrate it all a little better into the final product. And again, I'm probably going to botch this at some point. I can foresee it already. This is my first time building it since its creation and I've never built it all the way through. So we'll just have to see, I'm working off of pictures here. So you see here, it doesn't even, there's no connection here. This is all just loose. Um, I had to fix that in later. So I give the illusion that this is all built together. And it is in, in the uh, official sets. These are really nice little gear boxes almost, but that's not the case here. Oh, I didn't even take that off. That's my apologies. So this is something that would need to be added separately. Another one of those, things by which I can't think of the name. It's actually quite surprising if you actually sit down and try to name all these pieces you work with every day. Oh, that's backwards. You may actually surprise yourself in how hard that is. Okay, that's the correct direction. So that's the core of the body, and you can see how that works, the gearing. Very simple. So now we gotta make sure that all sticks together through that, we're going to put this aside for a moment. We're going to do a little sub assembly here. Let's take two of these. Put these two together. We got these lovely small axles in black. I couldn't get myself to use the red ones in this. Red and white just look great. I mean, they're my colors. <laughs> but for this particular creation, they seemed horrifically out of place. So here's where we use the last of these. And this is just kind of a, it ends up being his butt, but it's, it's uh, what holds everything together pretty nicely. So this goes on just like, let's make sure I'm doing this right. This goes here, and I can't for the life of me remember why, but it does. And so now this is all one piece. So next we're gonna build the top part here. And it's very simple, it just comes in three pieces. Got one of these, we're just gonna go in this peg right here. 
or hole. The peg is going to go in the hole here. And this will connect it to the top. And what is a deer without a bushy tail? So you put the bushy tail right in there and that'll cover up that axle. And I toyed a lot with it going up, which would I think would look really cool. But I ended up hiding it and putting it in the background. But I think we need to do one of these. Actually, no, we don't. We can just go ahead and put that on. So there's that. And this covers up all this in one little, okay, well, it's a cup out, oh, see? That's what happens when you do things without practicing. You forget all the little problems you ran into the first time. Okay, so that just goes pop right in there, and there we go. Okay, so for the front we'll need one of these. This won't come into play just yet. We have to connect these, which was another really hard thing. You can see it kind of, they're all the same width almost, but they don't fit together quite right. So I had to figure out a way to connect them. So that's what I did here. So those are gonna go together like that, but we gotta build little additional assemblies to make that happen. So let me grab some parts here. We'll start with the length four axle with stopper. And we're gonna add some pieces. This actually becomes the front connection for the legs. There's one. Oops. And then we'll slide one of these in here. This will help us connect everything together. And while we're at it, we'll throw on one of those. So again, if you like this format, it's not my personal favorite because I'm not very good at being Talking on the fly, I guess would be the way to describe it, but I think it's a interesting alternative to what I normally offer. And I think that it'll still do the job, and that job would be to show you how to make this thing. And as I get better at this, obviously, it'll be easier to follow me along because I'll know what I'm doing, but like I said, this is the first time I've done it. First time I've ever built this thing since I put it all together and I definitely didn't build it in this sequence. So this is completely different. Okay, so this is the first connection point. I believe this is the, yes, this is the right connection point. So how this works is just like so. You line these up here and then everything just kind of goes together. Those two pegs go in there. So we're gonna connect, our connection points are here, here, and here and you can see them all right there. So let me just slide, actually let's do it this way. We'll slide one, them in this way. So there's that. And then we'll just see if we can figure out a way to make this go through. How did I do that the first time? I guess the best way would be more like this. So I apologize. And then just pop that in there. And that's, that was actually a big discovery for me when I made this. It was, I was trying to make this all one cohesive unit, trying to lock everything in place. And then I made one felt, or fatal mistake and that was letting it go down. Like this, this pin does not hold it together. But as it turns out, that was a good thing. That allowed so much more personality and articulation to the overall figure. And you'll, you've seen it in the official one. If you haven't, take a look, he can sit which is something most figures can't do without looking really stiff and awkward. So we're gonna build another one of these in reverse on that side, and that'll complete the actual body, and the main chunk of this will be done. Okay, so we're gonna grab another axle here. Woo, where are you going? And again, build that, but in reverse. So we're gonna take another ball socket, wherever that might be, right here. Okay. Slide that in. Gotta put, build this in reverse, so it's a little confusing, especially when you take blurry photos, which is okay, because for a minute there I thought I lost these photos, which would have been way worse. Okay, we'll lock that in with one of these. This yellow lighting towards the front of this camera really, really makes my hands look yellow, which is it's not terribly bad, but I can assure you I'm not jaundiced. It's just, <laughs> and it's funny too, because when I watch other people's videos and they comment on their appearance, I always laugh at them. And then when I'm doing a video, I do the same damn thing. So it's funny how that works. But anyways, okay. 
Borak Eye in white. Can't remember where I got those from, but hmm. must have been a, maybe a Stormer set. I don't know. Okay, so we have our three connection points again. One, two, three. And if I learned my mistake from my mistake last time, well, I guess in this case I can't do that, so I'm gonna have to do this all in one motion, which can be tricky. But we got it. Okay, slides right in. And there you have a deer body. Doesn't really look like it. it looks more like a praying mantis or something, but that'll become a deer. So let's put this down for a minute and we're gonna build up its legs so it can stand. Okay, so these are the front legs. Build them in pairs because it's quicker. And these are not rocket science at all. They are pretty simple. You needed to use a upper leg piece for his lower leg just by the nature of these hoof pieces you need it to articulate that way more. So you get way more out of it there. I'll do another one here. I do recommend anyone who doesn't build multiples at a time to do so, especially in official LEGO instructions. It really saves a lot of time and it doesn't really take away anything from building. It just adds. One completed front leg, two completed front legs, and we'll just pop those on right there. The axle with stopper makes it so you're not going to get a lot of weirdness going on here. You'd have to pull out this whole axle just to get those legs out so it really doesn't hurt. And you'll see now that you're seeing me use this model without the magic of editing, You'll see he has some flaws, and hopefully those will become apparent later. Yes, he has great balance. You see in the video, he can easily stand on his front two legs, despite being a quadruped. Okay, for back legs, we got a little bit different of a construction, but we'll do it in the same manner. Got the two feet. This time around, it's less important to have um, front articulation, because this main function is kicking. So you see with these, I didn't point it out in the video, these are the one greater than standard length legs, or bones. So they have that little pin in them, and we don't use those, they're just kind of there to flesh out and equalize the length, since I have this extra length there. And they're not perfectly identical for sure, but they're close. Okay, and then we add two more of these. This time we move them on the sides though, because they're not gonna do any good in the back, and they're gonna get in the way in the front, so. Sides they go, and here's the obligatory crystalline thing, and I thought they made good, almost like thighs if you put them at the right angle here, like that. They kind of shape out the thighs of the thing, make his back legs look meatier and buffer, and they also cover a lot of distance, including the ball joint, so they completely cover that up really nice. It's not perfect, I, I feel like they should go, I wish I could do it in a way where they're more like this but I kind of just let it be for the sake of it, but that would look cool. That would look really cool and then blend right into the leg. But we do it this way, it gets the job done. So we got more legs, which apparently we didn't need, but they sure help. And we forgot something, this isn't gonna work. So remember what I said about um, things sliding off easy and how the axle with stopper helped that? No axle and stopper there, so we just kind of deal with it. But we take these, we pop them in here, and see it still has enough height to cover that up. I think that's the right direction. It may actually be this way. I'll have to double check that one. But we'll leave it like that for now. And through the magic of video editing, I will check. Okay, so I was absolutely right in my thought. It goes this way. So that front axle, or the axle goes in that front hole there. And we got a slight twist to it that may be a problem we'll have to see. I think that's fine. But they're fairly lined up. And that one goes right in there. So we have a four-legged creature and you'll see he already tends to lean down just based on the different lengths. And again, that was remember when I said this was kind of a saving grace of the model without even meaning to? Yeah, so that fixes that. So you can see a little slight difference and it kind of adjusts itself just in its standing pose. It's great to get those natural curves into something. It's really hard to get that in Lego and have something 
that you did on accident. You'll see too the legs, they automatically adjust to your changed position, which is cool. Um, makes the action feature kind of unreliable sometimes, um, but it, it's good. And you'll see I'm already using it, it already works. Uh, the parts that make it a problem haven't really been built yet. So let's go ahead and build him up. I wish you could, I should maybe try a lower angle next time, but that's okay. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna build is his neck. And that's something that I actually didn't get right until the final moments of the video. I really had to play around with it quite a bit to get it just the way I like it. So we get a curve there. And this is optional, but I found it really weird that his neck had holes in it, and especially the way the action feature emphasizes so much the, the neck region when he comes down, I had to fill those holes. So put some white studs in there. Not something that's vital to the figure at all, but it works. And we'll use the last length four axle with stopper on it and our last ball joints, because the rest are already on. And I love that I had these white versions because I only have a few of them and I pretty much used them all on this figure. So let's get some distance here. So one, two, just going back and forth between the two. And where did that thing go? There it is. See, if it was a real fig uh, real video that I normally do, could have just edited that out. But this is what we're left with. That's a neck, apparently. It's a very strange looking neck. But with that piece I forgot to show you in the beginning, gives it enough to just fit right in. And you'll see the weight of the legs alone, it'll be more obvious now. Really, well, I guess maybe it's not obvious, but they really don't put preferential treatment to the neck. It's just not heavy enough. So that's where the rubber band comes in. It needs to reverse the action. And I'll talk more about that when we get a little closer. Okay, so now we're gonna add some of the fur pieces. Actually, we'll do the head first. Let's do the head first. This was kind of the first step. This is the fun part. You you get an idea for something and then you, you put the pieces together and see the magic happen. And then, and then it inspires you to figure out all the gruesome details that you can't figure out as quickly as just putting a couple antlers on a creature's head. This is just kinda, anyone could do this part. I mean, that's awesome. But to figure out the rest of it takes a little bit more practice. So we're getting closer now, right? Usually, I like how Bionicle, the official instructions like you to put these on towards the end, especially with the masks. It makes you feel like you've you created this robot and now you're gonna power him up with the mask. And I don't know that they always used to do that. Um, I, I stopped following Bionicle pretty early on in my childhood and only recently came back to it as an adult. And again, you can see his head's just kind of dipping down, does not want to stay up. And the legs, but the legs really do want to go up, so it puts him in a really awkward posture. It wouldn't really work all that well as a two-legged creature. It doesn't really work that well as a four-legged either, but we'll fix that. Okay, I had to double check the fur pieces, but they are all, all they are all built exactly the same. So you got an upside down armor piece, and then the fur just connects right on there. So we'll build three of those. Upside down. Fur connection. Upside down. Fur connection. We got three of them. And you just pop them on one here. One here one on the neck. And now you'll see where the trouble starts with this whole action feature. Before it wanted to go so bad. But I guess I guess the way I have it posed right now is not too bad. But once you, I mean the fur that way doesn't look, isn't quite a hundred percent. I like to put it how it goes. It can go between or around the leg on each side. And then really just tighten up that, that front position. And then this can be brought forward a bit. And you'll see, see now it just looks like one fur thing. And what you don't really get to see in the videos is how it looks this way without the additional fur piece. And it looks kind of weird. If you pose this or look at it from a high angle, you'll see that ball joint. And it's not the greatest to see in the world, but it's better than most of the official sets, that's for sure. So again, you'll see he's almost done. So all we gotta do is 
put the rubber band on and this thing. So I didn't get to show this in the official video, so I'm gonna show it to you now and I can explain it a little bit. We gotta keep these open for the action feature of the Unity mode. And I, it's really important to me. I don't really get to talk about this much, so my requirements for these creatures are as follows. They have to unify, they have to function in a unified form, and you'll see in the video he barely functions to be unified, he looks terrible, but it's okay. They have to, fun they have to um, unify and they have to have an action feature. Those are my requirements for these, this line of toy, and that's probably what LEGO had with probably a hundred more requirements along the way. But that's what is guiding me through these, and that's what's making this unique. So I took a bold step on this one. I didn't like this top section. As you see, it kind of looks okay. It could function like this, um, but it just didn't really, it looked really flat. And no matter what you do, that flat just does not look organic. So there is a, a removal process to the unification, and it's pretty simple. You just add these two on, and they've kind of lost a bit of friction over time. But typically what happens is you put them on, you pop them in right in those holes, and depending on the strength and durability of your piece, you should just be able to pull it right back out. See, I've lost a lot of that friction, but I had it for a while there and I liked it, so I'm not too worried about it. It's not that much of a pain. This isn't an official set, so it doesn't have to work perfectly for play, but that just kind of filled out and it's kind of hard to see, but it really just finished everything. It, it's got that little weird gap there, but if you pose it just so, it goes away too. So I really just completed everything. And Ankir became Ankir at that point. Um, last thing is the rubber band. It's not required. It's not required for posing. You can see just, just because of this mess of fur at the top, it holds everything more or less together. Action features kind of spoiled at that point. It doesn't really work. Um, so you kind of have to fiddle with it a bit to get the rubber band to work and I don't even know how long it's going to take me here. But we'll give it a shot and see where we're at with that. So I had to remove the leg entirely, both legs. Um, nothing to say about that except, whoops. And you'll see now, with everything in place as we intended, it is connected both on that lip piece and that midsection. So it's, it's not too unsightly for a, a white rubber band on a white model. And that fixes pretty much everything. The legs are kind of naturally orienting themselves too high though, so you need to adjust the uh, teeth of the gear. And I don't recommend doing what I just did, and that puts a lot of strain on the gears. But in terms of time, it fixed our problem. Neck is down, kick, 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 legs are in the way, kick, kick, kick. So we're back to normal with Ankier here. Let's put his pieces back on and his cap. And there he is, there's Ankier. Didn't take too, too long. Oh God, it did. Okay, so I did want to show one more thing though, since for those who stuck through this whole entire video, I want to show you something else. So what I have here is an early sneak peek on something I'm working on. Creature of water. I already have a creature of jungle done, but I just haven't shown it yet, and I'm not going to show it here. But I wanted to show you some early process of this creation. Going with turtle for the creature of water, so big shocker there. Um, and this could be completely different when you finally see it, and it's completely not where I want it to be right now. So let me show you some of what I have. <laughs> when you look at it, it looks hideous. However, it's gonna have a, the neck is gonna be further out. I was toying with the idea of, of um, having a neck feature that goes in and out, but I'm gonna take that back. But anyways, we got some legs here. What the heck are these legs about? I'll show you what they're about. The dude walks. And I'm pretty proud of that. Let's show you with more space. So he literally walks completely on his own. Well, with a little help from me. And he can walk backwards too with no problem at all. And it's just about that one tire. And he can even unite. And it's, so when he's done, he's gonna have a big orange shell here, which I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna do. His neck's gonna be out further than that. He's not gonna look like a little race car like he does now. But yeah, that that's the feature there. Um, 
just lots of Technic build. It was, I had a toy like this when I was a little kid and I really, when I thought turtle, this is all I could think of was this little walking motion. And it was completely beyond my skill level to do. Um, though I did figure it out without any kind of guide. I just played with the parts over and over and over again until I came up with something that looked like a walking turtle. And I'm really proud of that. And I wanted to show it here first for those of you who stuck it out to see the rest of uh, Ankir and what he had to offer. So that's it for that, but let's put him aside there. And we'll bring back Ankir. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope it was informative for you. I hope it wasn't too boring. And I hope that someone out there will post up another Ankir because he's lonely by himself. It'd be great to see a whole herd of Ankir running around in, in the world. Um, so let me know if this helped, if this interests you, if you want to see more like this, if there's any creations I've done so far and shown that you want to see built, see how it works, see how it operates. Um, I alluded to a couple in this video. If you haven't seen any videos yet, definitely go check them out. They're a minute, minute and a half long, not a huge time investment. And I'm pretty proud of my work here. So Ankir says bye, and I will see you all next time on Play Stippling. Take care.